Tackling climate change is a global and urgent imperative. Developers all across the world are racing to install new solar and wind technologies for renewable energy. But where is that energy going to be stored? Batteries play a really critical role in that solution by offering very efficient means of energy storage and release on demand. Hi, I'm Lewis Piper. I'm Professor of Battery Innovation here at WMG and I work on lithium-ion battery research. So in 2020, we were producing around 185 gigawatt hours of production. Globally, we'll need 11 times that by 2030. So we'll need 2,000 gigawatts or two terawatt hours of production of lithium ion batteries a year to satisfy our needs. And so a lot of our research is focused on how to do that. So when people think of batteries, they often think of the things you buy and replace in your smoke alarms. But when we talk about batteries for cars, this is what we refer to as a battery. We consider it as the whole pack. And what we can see here is a collection of cells. So if we look closely down here, we see a dissected battery cell of the pout cell variety, where we see the electrodes, the anode, and the cathode, and the separator. And what we can see is we have stacks of these as our cells built into modules. And we have a collection of modules that are all linked together to form our pack. So when we think of batteries, we have to think in terms of cells, but also packs. In terms of the academic research, a lot of work is focused on new chemistry for the cells and where we're trying to identify alternatives to existing materials. In the industry focus, a lot of the focus is on existing chemistries with optimizing the distribution and the type of cells arranged in the pack to reduce dead weight to improve performance with existing chemistries. The interesting thing I find with batteries is it covers all timescales. So it goes from very fast processes within the battery to years of deployment in the applications. It also covers all length scales. We're talking about atomic length scales all the way up to grid level considerations. The difference between a physicist, chemist, engineer, policymaker is often to do with scale of where they focus more at. So a policymaker will focus more on the macroeconomic side and your chemist will focus on the processes at the atomic level. And so the realization that you need to be able to converse with all these different disciplines because it covers all those time and length scales, that interdisciplinary nature is really at the heart of developing lithium ion batteries. So what do battery scientists actually do? Well, we're continuously trying to improve batteries and understand how to suppress the modes in which they degrade and deteriorate. In order to do that, we have to use advanced techniques. One of those in our armory is operando X-ray methods. And so we're gonna just have a quick peer into what they're doing here at WMG. When you've made, for example, a pilot line production of a power cell of a new chemistry or manufacturing process that you want to investigate, one of the things you might want to do is directly see the reactions inside the battery as you charge and discharge. So we want to look at how the lithium goes in and out of those electrodes and quantify it. So one of the ways in which we do that is a bit like when you get an x-ray, we're going to x-ray these batteries. What we have here is essentially our X-ray source, which will shine X-rays into helium to reduce the scattering. Then it'll hit that gradient at the back to pick the right energy. We're gonna change our energy by changing the geometry. And then at that angle or energy, the X-rays will shine through our battery and we detect how much intensity has gone through our battery and how that changes. Okay. And so that shift here reflects changes in the nickel environment associated with us pulling lithium out of the system. In this way, we're using the x-rays to directly see 
the intercalation in the batteries as they're running. And that allows us to quantify how well they're performing and what's going on as we make modifications, either with the materials or the chemistry or the cycling protocols. So an ideal battery future to me is one where we have all different types of batteries for all different applications. So we'll have batteries integrated in our clothing to take advantage of kinetic movement to generate energy. We'll have batteries that are dedicated for high-end applications. We'll have batteries helping us with our renewable technologies. And electrification doesn't stop at electric cars. We'll also have to consider light rail, aerospace, marine, but there'll be a case where we'll be more mindful of a sustainable economy with regards to building for longer, for better, for lifetimes. That's one of the ways in which we can make a better society is build once for a longer future. And that's why I work on battery degradation.